AI. Today we're going to walk through an end-to-end -end example of generating synthetic data uh, using Gretel services. First we'll go ahead and sign in. Uh, you can go to console.gretel.cloud and you can sign in with a developer ID or GitHub address there. From here, once we're signed in, we'll go ahead and select new project. Select blank project. You can name your project if you want to. Once you've created a new project, we'll go to transform. From here, we have a set of Python notebooks that help you address like popular use cases that we see around using Gretel. Um, for our example today, we're gonna launch a notebook called create synthetic data from a CSV or data frame. This opens us up into the uh, Google Colab environment, which is a hosted uh, notebook environment uh, from, from Google. Uh, it's notable because it gives you free GPU access, which is really nice for training machine learning models. You also have the option, if you wish, of going ahead and downloading uh, the notebook or just downloading the raw Python to run inside your own environment. Uh, once again, heavily recommend that you run along with the GPU. We'll go ahead and click Run All, and we'll go ahead and walk through what's happening here as we uh, train a model and generate synthetic data. What's happening first um, is uh, the notebook environment here is installing our open source packages. So you can see the Gretel client, the Gretel synthetic data library, um, and pandas are all being installed. Next, it's going to ask us for an API key to authenticate for some of our premium services. So we go back to the Gretel console, choose integration, show API key, grab the API key, and we'll go back to the console here. So put in the API key, we'll go ahead and download those premium packages into our environment. Um, we'll be accessing the SDKs for the rest of this exercise. Um, the next step here is creating our CSV data set. So the ideal parameters to pass to our synthetic data library to create an artificial data set are um, CSV, JSON, um, or Pandas data frame. Here we're going to go ahead and load a data frame uh, using a popular healthcare analytics data set from Kaggle. You can see here we're going to pull back 10,000 records read that using pandas into a csv or sorry into a pandas data frame um, that will pass to our synthetic data training library here um, you can see it downloaded the csv um, loaded it into a data frame and we can take a look at it here so we have 10,000 rows 18 columns really varied kind of data so this is a good example to use when uh, training our synthetic model you have some integer data some categorical data floating points dates age ranges things like that all of these get learned, and really our goal going through this exercise is to create another data set that has a very similar distribution um, to this original data set, um, but has none of the um, um, duplicated records. So you get really kind of nice privacy benefits using this. Um, going through here, we see a configuration template, tons of options here. This is really minimized, so this is the bare minimum that you need to, uh, to generate a synthetic model. If you want to go ahead and, and, uh, and, and customize this yourself for your particular use case, you can simply go to our documentation. If you go to our open source library for synthetics, there's a, a link that you can grab right there. Let's go ahead and take a look at documentation for configuration. We are using a TensorFlow backend here uh, because it's the default model and it supports differential privacy uh, based training. So we'll go ahead and look at the TensorFlow config. Um, this shows us the options we have of setting here, where we can configure anywhere from the number of epochs to the learning rate to the complexity of the RNN that's being used on the back end and whether we would like to use TensorFlow uh, differential privacy or not. Um, in this mode, we're going to run without differential privacy, just use the default settings to generate a synthetic model. So here we defined a vocabulary size pastor tokenizer of 20,000, um, and we can see it going ahead and starting to build our model. We define our model here. We pass in a few um, parameters here. We're going to tell it to build a validator. What is a validator? Um, a validator is code that runs. It's part of our premium package that um, takes a look at different um, columns, um, across columns inside of your data, um, and looks at the ranges that are expected of the columns, whether it's categorical or floating, and making sure that the neural network outputs ranges that are sane based on what we saw with the training data. So really. It gives you confidence that the data you're, you're creating um, matches the shape and the distribution of your original data. We have early stopping configured here to prevent overfitting from happening, but you see it here training a model. See the loss dropping pretty significantly. Um, in my experience, anywhere less than, you know, typically 0 0.7, 0 0.8, you start to get pretty good quality synthetic data. So you can see it very quickly converged on a good solution here. 
Uh, we don't want this to overfit. We also want it to run really quickly. So what I'm going to do here is go ahead and stop this training after 20 epochs, and we'll go right over to uh, to generating data. So let's let it finish up our 20 epochs. Which ought to be a good enough solution to get reasonable quality data. Let's go lock to stop there. Okay. So I went ahead and stopped that. Here we're going to tell it to generate. Let's just have it generate a thousand rows. So this happens really quickly. And we'll continue running. So here you see two different fields. It's, um, it's essentially loading the model right now. And we've told it to generate a thousand records for us. Um, you see two different um, uh, counters here happening at the bottom. Valid records are records that are being generated by a neural network that are passing validation. So they're passing those um, inferred parameters that we learned looking at the training set. So you can see here very quickly building out those thousand records. The next thing we'll do is preview that and take a look at does this data look sane? Does it look like it matches our input? Um, here you can see at least uh, to initial inspection, it looks very good. Um, so here you see, um, once again, we created a uh, thousand rows, which we ask it to create 18 columns. We can see the columns even down to the age brackets seem to very closely match uh, what we had in our original data. Um, to get that additional set of confidence, right? So you want to understand the distribution of data and did our model actually learn those really cool correlations and things like that. Um, the next thing that we do is generate a uh, detailed report. So as you can see here, this detailed report shows you distributions across every column between both the synthetic and the, uh, the training uh, data sets, and then also some really cool high level statistics. So, um, you know, really starting off with how many of the original training lines were duplicated in a synthetic data set. Here we don't see any. And then we have a bunch of distance metrics that we can walk through here as well, um, looking at the uh, distance metrics and the number of unique values and distribution between the original data set and the synthetic data set we created. One of my favorite ones to look at right here is the, the correlation graph. So this is uh, a uh, column by column comparison of the correlations that existed in the original data set and how well they were replicated in the synthetic data set. So, you know, here, uh, this looks a little bit like a Minecraft sword. And, you know, essentially what we're trying to do is make sure that the correlations we see existing in this um, first data set, for example, the number of stay, um, it appears to be highly correlated with the number of visitors um, that you have, which is interesting. Um, you want to make sure that gets replicated in the uh, synthetic data set. The view below that is very similar here. It's just a subtraction of these two. So anywhere we see a color change here would indicate that there was a correlation that existed in one of the data sets that did not exist at the other. It can give us an indication if there's anything we need to dive into. Once again, we don't really see anything here yet. Um, once again, um, we can go through and look at the individual uh, distributions um, and, and see how well they match up. We only generated a very limited amount of data, so we generated 1,000 rows um, versus 10,000 rows of training data. So you can't expect it uh, to have perfect stuff here, but the correlations actually in the, um, the distributions between these different categorical fields and numeric fields actually appear to be very good, giving us an indication that we've got a healthy synthetic model we can use to generate data for our use cases.